uh, in this slide, uh, we just remind you of the anatomy and histology of the aorta. So basically, uh, we need to remember that there is an aortic annulus, um, then ascending aortic part, ending at the arch of the aorta with two great vessels, the brachiocephalic, left common carotid, and then left subclavian, the most distal. Going down up to the diaphragm will be the descending thoracic aorta. Under the diaphragm will be the abdominal aorta, either a suprarenal part or an infrarenal part. It's important when we're discussing patients with dissection and localizing areas of dissection. Uh, the second part would be the histology. Just to remember, intima media and adventigia. The min media will contain uh, the smooth muscle of the aorta. Uh, intima will start with an endothelial, smooth endothelial layer. Uh, this is also important when we are talking about what happens in dissections and what causes them. Finally, is how to measure the uh, diameters. It's not it's not important to know what what type of measurements you need to do, or what type of imaging to do. But it's important to know that we have a transverse diameter and anteroposterior diameter. Based on these, sometimes aneurysms will go um, sacular or fusiform, as we'll discuss. And then measuring these diameters to um, to follow up and um, assess the degree of expansion of these aneurysms would be important. So this is just a reminder of the, patho the pathophysi the, of the physiology so that we can discuss the pathology further. المحاضره دي هنتكلم فيها عن spectrum of aortic disease basically aortic aneurysms aortic dissection we بعض ال congenital anomalies على رأسها coarctation of the aorta. So basically this is the spectrum of uh, um, this lecture um, are aneurysms of the aorta, dissection of the aorta, and congenital anomalies, the commonest being coarctation of the aorta. Common causes of aneurysms, whether thoracic or abdominal aortic aneurysms, would be the commonest would be atherosclerosis, uh, also <coughs> uh, connective tissue disorders, which weaken the, the medial layer, as we'll discuss in the fact physiology, so something known as cystic medial degeneration. This would uh, be a precipitating factor for both dissections and aneurysms. Uh, traumatic uh, aneurysms and pseudo aneurysms do occur. Um, inflammatory abdominal aneurysms are seen in generalized inflammatory conditions. Um, and finally, mycotic aneurysms with infections, such as infective endocarditis or syphilis and TB, though very less common, but there are recorded cases of mycotic, rupture of mycotic aneurysms. In this slide, we can see three uh, shapes uh, or types of aneurysms that we usually meet. So there is a saccular aneurysm, as we can see on the right hand side, a saccular aneurysm takes the full thickness of the aorta, but it's a bulge on only one side of the vessel. A fusiform aneurysm bulges, also takes the full thickness, and it bulges on both sides of the vessel. Finally, a pseudo aneurysm, which is quite different, where part of the aorta would rupture, part of the wall would rupture, sending out the blood into uh, the uh, uh, into the outer layer of the aorta. The accumulation of this blood would cause an aneurysmal dilatation. However, pathologically, when this patient is when this aorta is dissected, we would find that it, the the aneurysm does not take the full thickness of the vessel and that's why it's known as a pseudo aneurysm. So this type starts with a dissection, a, a rupture of an ulcer or um, an infected area where part of the aorta is very weak, it ruptures, causes blood to flow into the outer layer of the aorta, bulging out, causing what looks like an aneurysm. However, it is a pseudo aneurysm, not a true one. كده يا جماعة احنا قلنا three types in aneurysms يا الساكيلر بشكله زي البقجة او الشنطة اللي جاي على جنب فيزيفورم واخدة النصين من الايورتا كل الايورتا على على الناحيتين السودو aneurysm is not a true aneurysm دي مش aneurysm حقيقية دي جزء من ال من ال جزء من ال inner layer of the aorta rupture ماشي blood flows out into the outer layer of the aorta which actually weakens the vessel جدا it's a very weak vessel at this point بيبقى الدم كله اللي بيها accumulate ده هيعمل bulge this is not a true aneurysm لانه لو احنا عملنا dissection خدناه pathologically وبصينا هنلاقي مش واخد كل layers بتاعت الأورطة زي ما هو بعيد بالصورة 
So where can we see an aneurysm in the thoracic ear? Uh, usually, atherosclerotic lesions tend to tend to cause aneurysms in the descending or and or and in the distal part of the arch. Aneurysms associated with degeneration of the medial layer, almost as in Marfan syndrome or Ehlers-Danlos, are most seen exclusively in the ascending segment, and even affecting the valve annulus, which might need repair or replacement of the valve itself. Finally, infectious causes, as we mentioned, inf infective endocarditis, uh, mycotic aneurysm, syphilitic, syphilitic or TB, these uncommon cases will frequently be seen in the descending ear. What is the epidemiology of abdominal aortic aneurysms? Uh, abdominal aortic aneurysms affect mainly males, so males are affected four to five times more than females and pose a high risk of mortality around 15,000 cases per year, and these statistics are from the USA. Elective surgical repair will pose a mortality of 4%, while mortality from rupture is almost 90%. This is an angiogram, so an aortogram would say, uh, that shows one of the three types of aneurysms. I think now you can... Uh, you can tell me which type of aneurysm this is. Uh, it is a saccular aneurysm, that's right, because uh, it, it affects the aorta, it bulges only to one side, it's not fusible, um, and this is an inferior one, so we can appreciate the presence of the renal arteries, the main, uh, going into the kidneys, and this the position of this inferior, uh, it's also a very dangerous position, because we see the openings of the uh, um, uh, the bo both um, this is uh, a com this is a coronary. It's sorry, it's an aortogram showing the dye passing through the whole the whole aorta, and as we can see clearly, there is a fuse. Uh, there is a saccular aneurysm in the inferior part of the aorta. The clinical presentation of both thoracic and abdominal aortic aneurysms are compared in this slide. For an abdominal aortic aneurysm, the commonest presentation is pain. However, its pain is quite misleading. It is dull, mm -hmm. hypogastric pain, sometimes back pain, uh, persistent, not affected by motion, and um, it is it is quite it's quite it's quite a subtle pain. So it's not of high intensity, particularly if it's a slowly growing aneurysm. Many patients pass asymptomatic and are discovered incidentally or after rupture or po unfortunately post-mortem. Uh, a per week can be heard at the site of the aneurysm, but very unlikely in, in, in adults do we hear per week see to the bigger, the big size of an adult and uh, the higher BMIs of many people. Uh, the, the triad of rupture, so when an aneurysm ruptures, an abdominal aneurysm ruptures, the patient encounters severe either abdominal or back pain. A pulsating mass can be found during a meticulous examination, and uh, most of them will present shocked or high potency. Regarding the thoracic aortic aneurysm presentation, it is um, quite dif different. So, uh, as a mass effect, the aneurysm might compress on the larynx, causing hoarseness of voice. It might cause chest pain, particularly if it is uh, very proximal. Um, and sometimes chest pain is caused by uh, uh, acute rupture and hemopericardium, as we'll discuss later in uh, the presentation of thoracic aortic aneurysms. Finally, if the aneurysm affects the valve causing aortic regurge, shortness of breath will happen. If, it ta if, the, if the patient tamponates, if there is rupture of an aneurysm with hemopericardium, this will be a cause of acute uh, dyspnea. So, how to screen patients? How to know if the patient has a triple A? Patients over 65 who are males should be treated or should be screened with an ultrasound and duplex, abdominal ultrasound and duplex scan. This is a must, and this is how the guidelines say. Females who are smokers or ex-smokers can be can be screened. They sh they, they, it's not a must, but they can be screened with an abdominal ultrasound and duplex scan just to make sure they don't have any aneurysms. What about brothers and sisters of patients who have had an aneurysm in AAA? These also should be screened. If all first-degree relatives and siblings should be screened as above with an ultrasound and a duplex scan.
management. Management of abdominal aortic aneurysms would include medical treatment and intervention. Um, medical treatment is basically control of risk factors of atherosclerosis and control of blood pressure, uh, treatment of hyperlipidemia, uh, cessation of smoking, reducing body weight, and reducing blood pressure and controlling diabetes. How to follow up these patients if it's a chronic aneurysm, um, if it's an Commonest area affected commonest areas affected with thoracic aortic aneurysm are the ascending aorta followed by the descending thoracic aorta. These are followed least with the arch and the thoracic abdominal, which are the affect mainly on ten percent of the cases of thoracic aortic aneurysms. Um, what causes thoracic aortic aneurysms? Um, on the top of the list would be atherosclerosis, which is the commonest followed by cystic medial degeneration, which affects a particular group of people, patients with Marfan syndrome, Ehlers-Danlos syndrome, and many other connective tissue disorders. And this, is, this happens through a cystic medial degeneration, which will show a slide showing how the mechanism of cystic medial degeneration happens. Um, uncommon causes including infections such as syphilis or TB, aortitis, um, all these are also uncommon causes of thoracic aortic aneurysms. So what is med cystic medial necrosis? Cystic medial necrosis, as I've just mentioned, happens in particular disease, such as Marfan and Ehlers-Danlos, and other connective tissue disease. It is basically ground basophilic material starting to accumulate within the medial part of the aorta, weakening it, forming cysts, and causing um, aneurysms and later on rupture. Um, the, uh, atherosclerosis, on the other hand, would affect the intima causing first intimate plaques, which start to degenerate um, uh, and then reach the media. When the media is reached, uh, the weakening will, uh, the, the vessel gets weaker and starts forming an aneurysm. Uh, atherosclerosis would affect mo mostly the abdominal aorta causing triple A's, abdominal aortic aneurysms. Less common would be the ascending aorta and least common are the, is the ascending aorta. And they are quite uh, well known for forming thoracoabdominal aneurysms as well. Less common causes would be silent prior aortic dissections, which we'll mention in the next section, um, infections such as syphilis and uh, mycotic aneurysms from endocarditis, vasculitis of large vessels such as takayasu or giant cell, which is known as temporal arthritis, are all uncommon though recorded cases are seen. Presentation of a thoracic aortic aneurysm, it is co it's quite varied, but the most common 75% of patients will go unnoticed, so it's asymptomatic. If uh, that is the ascending aorta and the aortic aneurysm are affected, we'd expect uh, aortic regurgitation, giving us the symptoms and signs of aortic regurgitation and endiastolic murmur, uh, dilatation of uh, endiastolic murmur, all the signs of aortic regurg, low cardiac output, and so forth, um, which will continue. Uh, up to development of when the patient develops heart failure will get the symptoms and signs of left-sided heart failure and if we're imaging these patients we'll notice that there is dilatation of the sinus of Valsalva which is basically the aortic root area or we'll see a proximal dilatation of the aorta and then uh, add, along with the aortic regurg which will then need to be scanned further with CT and MRI. If the aneurysm is big enough, it will cause mass symptoms such as pain, chest pain, cough, hoarseness of voice, dysphagia. And uh, finally, we can meet, uh, if there is acute uh, presentation, we can find acute aortic syndrome. So um, a dissection followed by an intramural uh, hematoma formation, that is a blood clot within the dissected area. We'll show a slide showing this later. And finally, rupture with this with, with the symptoms uh, to present then with symptoms of uh, acute dissection rupture, which will explain uh, in the next couple of slides. So what type of investigations to do for these patients? This is just a simple guide, though there are more complex and sophisticated uh, explanations which you need and be aware of. Basically, we do a CT for all patients, either with thoracic abdominal aortic aneurysm or a, uh, with a thoracic abdominal aortic aneurysm if they are not contraindicated for use of dye. Supposedly, if the patient has dye allergy or renal, marked renal impairment, then we will resort to an MRI. 
If we have a tortuous aorta or an aneurysmal arch of the aorta, which is quite difficult to scan with, an, with a simple CT, we need to go for 3D reconstruction CD or an MRI. And uh, the easiest is the echo, which we can use in patients with affection of the root, which is easily seen by an echo machine. So we can see patients with an aortic annulus, affection, aortic regurg, along with ascending aorta. We can also image those with an echo. Very similar to uh, abdominal aortic aneurysms, we need guidelines to say when to operate on a patient with thoracic aortic aneurysm. When the diameter of the ascending aortic aneurysm reaches 5.5 up to 6 centimeters, we need to operate. However, in patients with Marfan, or bicuspid aortic valve, or familial cases of thoracic aortic aneurysms, uh, uh, these would need to be operated on earlier. So if the size reaches even 5 centimeters, they need to be operated on. Uh, High-risk patients are those patients where the size of the aneurysm has almost reached 6.5 to 7 centimeters. And again, their procedure will also be quite risky. What about the arch aneurysms and the descending theoretic aneurysms? If the diameter of the aneurysm reaches 6 centimeters, we need to operate. Or, if the rate of expansion of an aneurysm is more than 0.5 centimeters per year, uh, ir irrespective of the size of the aneurysm itself. If the patient develops severe aortic insufficiency, so the valve needs to be replaced or repaired along with a baffle or um, a graft done to the ascending aorta. And obviously, if patient is quite symptomatic, we will need to operate anyway. This picture, this picture shows a patient with a saccular ascending aortic aneurysm and how a graft has been placed at the site of the ascending aorta. This is uh, the most common surgical procedure that is done, whether in the ascending or the descending, whether in the thoracic or the abdominal aorta. Again, we've explained that there's another endovascular procedure. It is very selective, and it cannot be done in the ascending aorta. It's quite uh, difficult in this position, technically. This figure, this, this, this picture shows a patient with a saccular ascending aortic aneurysm and how a graft is placed in this position. This is the commonest surgical procedure done. Uh, again, it, it, it is quite a risky procedure, but uh, life-saving for many patients. How to manage patients with thoracic aortic aneurysms? Very similar to the treatment options in patients with uh, abdominal aortic aneurysm. A beta blocker is needed. It is the mainstay of therapy. We can add other antihypertensive medications to reduce, to reduce blood pressure. But as we've said, beta blockers are not only beneficial uh, to redu in reducing blood pressure and in decreasing sympathetic, decreasing heart rate. It's also very important as it, 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 in its mechanism of action, there is a reduction in stress or trauma to the aorta. يعني بمعادلة معينة ماشي الأيورتا نفسها البيتا بلوكر بيخلي بيقلل حاجة اسمها الشير ستريس وبيقلل الضغط اللي بيحصل على الأيورتيك وول وده مهم قوي في حالات الأنيوزمز. Another any other antihypertensive medication from these groups ACE inhibitors, ARBs, calcium shaldopin, diuretics can be added for, to reduce our systolic blood pressure up to 110 or even less and, and also reduce the heart rate to 50 to 60. And these patients need meticulous management of blood pressure as well as monitoring. يعني لازم يتبعوا جدا blood pressure بتاعهم أهم من أي cardiac patient تاني. Another very important topic is aortic dissection. It is a life-threatening condition. Its incidence is not very high, so three to every 100,000 per year, but the mortality is uh, quite high and it's counted by the hour. So from the site, from the time of, um, of presentation of dissection, it would take, uh, it would, uh, it, uh, mortality would be one to two percent per hour. Uh, prompt therapy, rapid uh, intervention, rapid t uh, with medical treatment, so rapid, uh, rapid intervention, quick, would improve survival. However, overall, survival of aortic dissection is not, uh, is not quite high. Uh, regarding the presentation, it may either be asymptomatic, no specific, low, it's chronic, 
a slowly developing dissection, um, or if there may be a classic presentation which we'll discuss in the next slide. First of all, um, a aortic dissection, it is a tear. It is not like an aneurysm, it's not a bulge, it's not uh, just simply weakening of the layers, لا. It is a proper tear in intima, أول layer in intima, بداية الوول of the aorta. It leads to separation of both the tunica media from the intima layer, وتعمل لي false human. يعني حتى من الأورطة, من الجدار بتاع الأورطة تقطعت, أثبته إلى جزء إنتما وجزء فاصل بين بينه وبين التونيكا ميديا بلاد هيدخل وهيعمل لنفسه تراك زي ما احنا شايفين في صورة الـ MRA اللي على الشمال تحت so this MRA picture uh, magnetic resonance angiogram lower left image shows a false lumen there is a flap in the intima the site of the tear the site where the rupture has happened uh, the, the, the dissection has happened and then there is a false lumen that goes down down the aorta, started in the descending thoracic aorta, and continues downwards. So, what is the what is the epidemiology of this disease? It's more common in males, around threefold higher in males, than at adult females. The age expected is 50 to 70, but, pardo, it's very similar to aneurysms. Patients with congenital connective tissue disorders are more liable at a very young age. than Ehlers Danlos, Farfan syndrome, pregnancy also causes weakening of the connective tissue. It might, it might be a risk factor for development of dissection, and there are many recorded cases of pregnant females with who have who have developed spontaneous aortic dissection. Coarctation it's one of the congenital problems of the aortic wall, and uh, we'll discuss uh, your uh, coarctation later. Vasi coarctation is another risk factor for developing dissection at a very young age. Direct trauma can also cause dissection. We record cases of patients who develop traumatic aortic dissection. Normal healthy patients but develop traumatic aortic dissection. Systemic hypertension is one of the most important risk factors for developing dissection. Well, around two thirds of the patients who are detected with the or diagnosed are hypertensive, particularly uncontrolled hypertensive patients. So by now we know any key for developing dissection is something that causes weakening of the wall or overstress of the wall. So things like Marfan, Ehlers-Danlos will cause weakening. If it's easily tearable, can it utter. أو حاجة زي الهايبرتنشن it will cause continuous trauma continuous shear stress stress ضغط على ال wall of the aorta ending up in forming a a tear قطع في ال uh, ال aorta disease like fibromyalgia because of increased blood pressure لأن الضغط فيها بيعلى جامد في fibromyalgia and thus it also causes the same problem as in uncontrolled hypertension continuous stress over the aortic wall. Cocaine or other stimulants, cocaine by itself will cause severe hypertension. You have to again. Plus continuous intake of cocaine, chronic use with a common for addicts, the chronic use of cocaine, higher depth, it will cause weakening of the layers. And so will smoking. Smoking pardon. Smokers are at a higher risk for aortic dissection than uh, the normal population of the same age. Bardu, نرجع نقول very similar to aneurysms of the aorta are the conditions, the congenital conditions that cause aortic dissection. زي Marfan syndrome لأنه بيعمل we just said إن هو it causes tunica media degeneration, cyst formation. Very similarly to this will be Ehlers-Danlos syndrome. Uh, it causes weakening of the media. وده هيبقى it makes it easier for a tear to happen in the aorta and also at a younger age. Uh, patients who have uh, changed their aorta, prior aortic valve replacement, for a patient with bicuspid aortic valve, their bicuspid aortic valve is one of the disease which comes with uh, a general a general aortopathy. With a co-architation, big imaginal aortopathy. Yani, uh, the aorta is not perfect, it's a diseased aorta. So with a patient with a bicuspid aortic valve, I would expect that he is at a higher, or she is at a higher risk of developing aortic dissection. 
برضو قلنا inflammatory conditions quite uncommon but they're still there تكياسو is one of the arthritis inflammation of uh, the great vessels واحد من البيك طبعا biggest great vessel is the aorta so تكياسو does affect the aorta the giant cell arthritis أو temporal arthritis البهست لأنه برضو البهست is a disease that affects the big vessels pregnancy uh, and polycystic kidney disease pregnancy because it causes a sort of weakening of the connective tissue during the period of pregnancy polycystic kidney disease لأنه ال uh, polycystic kidney برضو بيحصل معاه uh, problems of the great vessels uh, one of which is the aorta ولو نفتكر من بطنة polycystic kidney في معاه aneurysms in the brain بتحصل it's also common so this is a disease that does not only affect the kidneys but it also affects other big vessels how do these patients present هنا بقى الاريتيك ديسكشن از بيت ديفرنت من انيزمز موستلي هيبقى في برزنتيشن فور ذا تير تو هابن ا تير ان ذا ايرتا از سمثينج فيري فيري بينفول سمتايمز ات از ات ات از ميس دايجنوز از ان اكيوت مايكارديال انفاركشن ودي حاجه حصلت كتير اتس فيري كومن اتس ا فيري كومن ثينج سو هاو تو ديفرنشيت ات كوزز اكيوت تشست بين ماشي في تشست بين فيري سيميلر تو ذات اوف اكيوت ام ار بات وذ كوايت Uh, a couple of a of differences. مثلا, the chest pain of acute MI, uh, acute aortic dissection, will start interscapular, من ورا, back. It will go to the back. It will start with an abrupt onset. يعني, it does not escalate. The severest point of pain, 10 على 10 or 9 من 10 at the scale, هتبقى at presentation. So at the presentation, the pain is quite severe. It is agonizing, tearing, severe pain. The patient might experience might explain and no pain there he will describe it as the worst ever pain has all of it is it is a very very serious type of pain of the classifications of pain has a leotic dissection many of the classification that has a lot of sometimes tearing sometimes stabbing the pain might migrate it might be a sign that the dissection is propagating the tear is open and it starts to propagate downwards mostly يعني it goes down as the patient feels the pain propagating من حتة لحتة it is not a good sign لأنه ده معناه I have a bigger dissection going on احنا عندنا تقسيم تاني لإيه لل aortic dissection الجراحين بيعتمدوا عليهم and these two classifications are Debaki and Stanford very common and very old presentations Debaki Um, is classified into three uh, types. Type 1 Debaki اللي هو proximal و distal dissection الاثنين proximal and distal حصلوا مع بعض. طيب type, type 2 proximal only يعني كتير بدأ proximal وانتهى proximal only proximal dissection. Type 3 is only distal so there is nothing in the arch or in the proximal part. طبعا obviously it seems in the doulet تقسيمات عشان الجراح يستفيد منهم and uh, وفي الام ار او السي تي for us to understand what's happening with the extent of dissection بيعرفونا عن طريق دي باكيس كلاسيفيكيشن a simpler one is Stanford classification Stanford يقول لك ان هما either proximal or distal dissections so uh, Stanford type A is any dissection that is proximal not affecting the uh, descending urethra while type B is Um, يعني اللي هو includes يعني type A will include type 1 and 2 دي باكي classification لكن type B اللي هو only affect the distal uh, urethra ده type B standard اللي هو type 3 دي باكي classification type 3 دي باكي classification ال commonest type A اللي هما ال proximal uh, ومعاه ال distal or the proximal only دولة about 62% من ال 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 دولت 60% من ال all the aortic dissections seen 38% of them will be only distal dissections طبعا what are the complications of aortic dissection uh, obviously هيبقى yeah, في ischemia of, of, of all the of all the vessels that are a that are branches of the aorta يعني um, من اول بقى ال uh, The very proximal port rupture, uh, ascending rupture, sorry, dissection, which is very proximal, بعد the aortic sinuses, بعد the valve, 
the very proximal vertebral cord will rupture into the pericardium and another so within the pericardial sac I'm still within the pericardial sac this will cause hemopericardium and in this acute session it will mostly be tamponade yani quick rapid compression over the heart from blood around the pericardial sac within the pericardial sac so if we go further on to the arch which is very actually very tricky and very um, and very serious you'll find that the blood flow to the upper part of the body and to the brain will be compromised by brachycephalic left common carotid or left subclavian vessels so upper limbs and brain going downwards uh, to uh, to the descending thoracic aorta according to the vessels that are compromised ممكن يحصل paraplegia so يعني هلاقي انه blood supply to the lower part of the body are compromised يعني ما فيش blood يبقى زي a probably a presentation presentation of any stroke that is affecting the vessels going down going below the diaphragm into the uh, the branches to the vital organs there would be renal ischemia if a renal artery is affected or both renal arteries are affected lower limb ischemia if uh, we've reached the the, the common iliac the femoral arteries where the mesenteric ischemia if the mesenteric arteries or if the mesenteric arteries affected you but generally speaking most of these complications would either be if it's proximal you but the khana ruptured into the pericardium and hemopericardium compromise على الهارت filling of the heart and other than this mostly the branches the different branches coming out of the aorta will be jeopardized will be affected and it will cause ischemia wherever the dissection happens من اول Brachycephalic left common carotid left subclavian is upwards. Upper limbs will, will brain. Paraplegia. When I reach the descending thoracic nerve branches, it'll go downwards to the legs. Renal ischemia. When, I, when I've reached the renal arteries, mesenteric ischemia. I'm going to mesenteric arteries affected. And finally, lower limb ischemia. When I've reached the bifurcation of the common iliac with femoral vessels. All dissections are risky. But there is a risk score according to the positive categories that we identified. That we find in the more risky, the need for intervention is quicker, meticulous care, follow up asra. So, in the high risk conditions, if a dissection happens in a patient with Marfan or known aortic valve disease, or a patient with an aneurysm in the thoracic aorta, we did say that an aneurysm in the thoracic aorta might be caused by a dissection. And cause causes um, causing a pseudo aneurysm, not a true aneurysm. So, we can avoid the thoracic aortic aneurysm. This will even make it uh, a much higher risk, uh, a much uh, make the patient a much higher risk patient. Uh, previous manipulation of the aorta, such as cardiac surgeries, valve replacements, all of these make the patient at a higher risk. Uh, what about high risk pain features? Hnaunna, the chest pain. It's very similar to pain of other conditions in the cardiac region. Mungkin it will be pleuritic, severe, mungkin it will be acute myocardial infarction pain. So, all features that would give it an extra point of high risk pain. If it's if it starts in the back, in the chest, or abdominal pain, um, and this pain would be described as severe intensity since the present since start. People mean it all. It is very severe, abrupt onset. يعني even يعني بريسكير أسرع بكثير من presentation of MI abrupt is at the same second يعني أول ما جي ال pain it's very very quick جي مرة واحدة very very quickly and very very severe pain during its presentation during the during the start of the pain will be a tearing pain or ripping pain as if the patient feels a tear in his body bit of tar and this is very severe form of pain. What about heart examination features? This patient Gary and I will examine him. If I find a pulse deficit, they deem indicated, and there is a compromised vessel on one side. So there is a good pulse on the say we have a good pulse on the right. The left side pulse is unfelt. You only feel left common and carotid affection, and as left subclavian artery affection. Systolic blood pressure difference. Now still think if the systolic blood pressure is different between two limbs. And between upper and lower limbs as well, ممكن يكون affection in the diaphragmatic one until تعالى the common iliac vein and the affection will be of both lower limbs. 
If there is a focal neurological deficit, this would give me a serious indication, an indication that seriously one of the uh, arch branches or uh, the arch branches are all affected in conjunction with the pain. And if I felt a new, if I heard a new diastolic murmur indicating the proximal dissection and the, the aortic valve itself is affected by dissection. This is also quite serious. The in, in, uh, tackling uh, proximal dissections is very tricky. Easier to tackle a thoracic, uh, a, a thoracic descending, thoracic dissection, or an abdominal dissection. The worst would be tackling an arch out as the urethral. And these are sites of big branches and um, serious branches and coronary vessels. Um, finally, if the patient presents with shock or hypertension, the edema indicator that it is uh, his high risk patient. And when this patient presents, what are the investigations needed? The patient can be taken to a, uh, an echo lab or an echo machine, portable echo machine through the patient, and a trans thoracic echo is done. Uh, if it's a proximal dissection, it will be easy to, to, um, to spot uh, the dissection. If it's affecting the, uh, the aortic valve or the aortic regurg, this will be easily seen by a color flow, a continuous flow imaging color flow of the valve. Uh, a, more, a more accurate technique, though not feasible to all the patients that are not shocked, the mesh cooperative will be transesophageal echo because we can image a longer part of the vessel. So it's a very sensitive technique. It can even be used in an ER and it's quite safe. But it's a bit tricky to note that the patient can be shocked introduction probe, but generally it is more accurate to show us a larger part of the aorta. It will be accurate in the posterior structure with this posterior structure for other show flap of dissection clearly. This is a Francis of GL echo long axis view. As we can see, a proximal dissection by the menin just above the annulus of the aortic valve will flap without the section what hot. We can now appreciate the presence of a true lumen. Will fall the lower T will F. T is for a true lumen. F is for the false So this image is uh, uh, it shows a proximal uh, aortic dissection. What about CT? CT is very beneficial. Uh, we can measure the dilatation of the aorta. We can screen the aorta from, from its origin بعد الأيرتيك فالف up to um, the end of the abdominal aorta and its bifurcation. We can see the, the start and end of the intimate flap. Low intersection is localized to one area. We can differentiate which area. Uh, it will give us good uh, readings to the rates of flow of blood. يعني هعرف the flow of blood through the true and the false lumina. And we can clearly see a flow of um, the true and the false lumina. ودي طبعا هتبقى مور بينيفيشال للجراح if the patient is going to perform a procedure it is much more accurate than just doing an echo or a chance of jail if I يعني لو انا هقارن بينه وبين الام ار الاثنين كويسين جدا but MRI is best for soft tissue يبقى هو احسن في demonstration of aortic flaps ويبين ال opening of the intimate tear the exact site of the tear وكمان the degree of aortic insufficiency can be seen which is something that we can't do with a CT machine uh, it is excellent in, the, in differentiate flow velocities, so I can have um, good numbers of the flow velocity in the true lumen and in the false lumen. Uh, it will show me the compromise to the aortic side branches and the, the velocity, um, the velocity of blood flow in each of these branches. The it is not, it's not available in CTs. Well, طبعا the biggest advantage for the use of an MR here, we do not need any contrasting CD, we do not need any ionizing radiation, and they are not invasive. A uh, problem of an MRI is to be the availability of an MRI machine and costs in some hospitals will be a an MRI is more expensive than a CT. This, this, this beautiful image is of an MRI, mm, magnetic resonance angiogram, so it's an MR, but it focuses on the aorta. This is the intimate flap starts in the distal portion and continues distal. You have that type B, aortic dissection. So, now we have machine based Stanford. You have that distal bus, that type B, aortic dissection. Well, here we can appreciate the site of entrance with the end of the flap. The false lumen is, 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 um, is very clearly seen. The true lumen is very clearly seen. We we'll add, add to this will be. The um, velocity of flow of the it will be measured by the MRI, 
MRA والكمبرومايز to اي of the branches across طبعا ده سكشن واحد لكن في كذا سكشن احنا ممكن نجيبهم and we can measure the flow in, in most of the vessels in all of the vessels sorry uh, crossing ونشوف اذا كان في compromise to any of these vessels طيب uh, I, have, I have now a couple of imaging modalities which to use برضو زي في الاريتيك انيوريزم there is a general guide if I'm highly suspicious of aortic dissection run a TOE lab or a CT whichever is easier and quicker or available on the CT or TOE will give me um, equivalent information for that. if the patient is critically ill patient cannot move مش هقدر ان ال CT so I can bring in a TOE because these can be portable unlike CT machines I put the trans of jail echo and perform a TOE on, on bedside beside the patient طيب if I'm if I have no suspicion of a, of, of a dissection then I'd go for a CT scan لأنه it's less invasive and it would scan the whole of the aorta uh, if it's a community hospital in community hospitals the availability of all the machines is possible ما عنديش TOE وال MRI وال MRA و multi slice CT scan so I can go with a CT scan uh, if I am suspecting a branch vessel in the هنا بقى I will need an aortogram, yeah, I need a stutter with a catheter and we'll inject dye into the aorta, the stutter at the up to a certain level in the aorta, and I will the aorta. It will show me the compromise vessels. And of course, uh, something that can do the same, but it's a little bit more expensive, that will take more time, will be the magnetic resonance angiogram. So if a patient has a chronic aortic dissection and he's treated medically, I can either go for an MRI scan or a CT provided in Nana Bamil follow up you stahsan benafsil modality alashana arak the extent of dissection be zid be ill hassal uh low fee aneurysm I be zid be ill workers. So it's preferred to use the same imaging modality and you find a chronic aortic dissection is is diagnosed and followed up an MRI I can make an MRI if possible. طبعا علشان ال pain of fetal aortic dissection زي ما قلنا ال common big chest pain وعندنا كذا we have a couple of diseases that we need to differentiate from aortic dissection so for example an acute myocardial impact pain uh, will be mostly pressure pain not tearing pain uh, it may radiate however pain for aortic dissection will migrate يعني ايه الفرق ال tearing ال radiation ال pain is in the chest for example and at the same time you feel it in your left shoulder However, pain of my migrating pain has to work. And it will start in your chest, then it will go down. So you start feeling it in your abdomen, and then it will go down. You start feeling pain in your legs. Um, enzyme elevation, though, in aortic dissection, the enzymes come in better. And the key uh, parts of the dissection, particularly of the ascending aortic dissection, it might affect the heart. It will cause damage to part of the cardiac muscle. So I am sorry, acute myocardial infarct, or but in normal pericardium or normal cardiac tamponade. So it is. It is not the best way to differentiate taking. It is good to do with cardiac enzymes more than threefold increasing CKMB. Our uh, level of high sensitivity to pulmonary will give me a good indicator. So, in the pulmonary embolism, pulmonary embolism, the pain of embolism is generally due to spirophysics, so it's related to respiration. It will increase when I'm taking in a breath. The pulmonary embolism will cause my pleurisy. Haga uh, command is very important to differentiate using an ABG. So patient will be hypoxemic. He will be desaturated if you put on an examiner. Well, ABG typically will show hypoxemia. Well, I'm gonna just X-ray areas of uh, uh, pulmonary infarct will start to appear, but that within a couple of days. Tabo pericarditis. Pain of pericarditis typically changes with position. Udi, it is not a character neither of MI nor of pulmonary embolism or dissection. So patient typically likes the, to lean forward. لأن a change in position uh, of the patient no يرجع backwards مثلا to cause severe pain he always likes to lean forward typically and uh, and typically oscillating and oscillating these patients would reveal a friction rub a characteristic friction sound that is to and fro and it is not related to um, and it's not related to any part of the cardiac circle uh, using an ECG well, it, it is diagnostic, but not to a, to a certain extent. يعني في pericarditis في a characteristic uh, slope for the ST elevation 
معاها depression depression of the PR which is actually more sensitive than ST elevation لأن ال ST elevation هو اللي هيحصل في الأكيد myocardial infarction ويحصل في البيريكارديس however ما فيش عندي ST elevation موجود في الدايسكشن except if it affects the coronary arteries ال pain of ال initial management of aortic wall stress أو ال initial management of patients with aortic dissection Uh, very very important is to control this patient's blood pressure and keep it to the lowest lowest blood pressure يعني حتى ينزل عن ال 100 uh, مش 120 any blood pressure below 100 will be favorable في حالات ال acute aortic dissection وبعد كده he will continue also to reduce his blood pressure uh, the best drug drug of choice هنا هيبقى ان انا infuse intravenous beta blockers uh, particularly ال well known in this condition is la beta root طيب supposedly the patient has active COPD or status asthmaticus or is allergic to these drugs I can start with um, uh, deltaism or verapamil calcium channel blockers اللي هم هي reduce the blood pressure however we need to know that a beta blocker is much better than a calcium channel blocker and beta blocker has the effect of reducing shear stress reducing the stress the pressure over the wall of the earth اللي هو أصلا في tear and weakened enough طيب pain control the patient needs pain control زي زي عين الأكيد ما فرض إنفوشن he needs up to um, opiates he needs a lot of morphine غالبا لأنه pain will be unbearable patient can die a patient can go into vasovagal or hypotension just from the pain uh, secondary uh, control would be uh, adding in drugs so you can add intravenous vasodilators you can add in, uh, intravenous vasodilators uh, um, such as sodium nitroprusside بستي أو تعديل نيتروكليسترين but my optimal goal هنا هيبقى watching over a blood pressure which needs to go below 100 as we've, ex as we've explained earlier in the feed two types of dissection based on uh, Stanford classification and, and this classification helps surgeons and clinicians to decide whether to start medical or surgical treatment أي حاجة proximal needs urgent surgical consultation so we start arranging Uh, quickly for an operation to be done. Uh, during this period, we need the mean arterial pressure to be around 70 millimeter mercury and establish a state of euvolemia. And if you nested with the tamponade, rupture into the pericardium, will be a loss of a huge amount of fluids. So an intravenous fluid bolus is needed, titrating the mean arterial pressure, and then we need to review our images. Pericardial tamponade, a contained rupture or not, يعني A rupture that is uh, in محطوط within limits يعني contained في حتة واحدة ولا it's still continuing the rupture is progressing distal مثلا في مع severe aortic rigor so in my procedure I'm gonna uh, add in an aortic valve replacement procedure to my plan يبقى type A is quite serious with surgical consultation is from the beginning level out type B type B بقى it is less it is very serious though but it's less than type A أي حاجة distal بنبدأ بالفلويدز تايتريتنج تو مي ام اي بي مين ارتيريال بريشر يبقى حوالي 70 اند استابليشنج ا يوفليميك ستيت اللي هي ما يبقاش هاي بوتنشال ايفاليويتنج ذا ايديولوجي اوف هاي بوتنشال يبقى ممكن يكون اراجع الايمجز بتاعتي ممكن يكون انا اي ميست ا تامبون عادي بدل ما هوش تايت بي ماشي واي ذا بيشنت هاي بوتنشال لو انا فيس كونتينيوسلي هاي بوتنشال ريفيوينج ذا ايمجز ايفيدنس اوف ا كونتيند رابتشر ويذر اور نوت الرابتشر بتاعي اللي حصل is contained محكوم مقفول considered a trans thoracic echo for the cardiac function يعني يمكن patient already has a myopathy أو has أو داخل في cardiogenic shock from another cause يبقى I need to evaluate all this بالراحة I evaluate all this within a couple of hours and then urge, urgent surgical consultation is done يعني في type A urgent surgical consultation is the, the first part of the plan however in type B I, will, I would wait a couple of hours أعمل الـ images بتاعتي I will review my images and see what's going on in the in, in the dissection and where is the flap exactly وبعدين surgical consultation is done تاني to sum up the management عشان ما نتوهش definite definitive therapy for uh, uh, type A dissection هي surgery طب when 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 can I? When can't I operate the patient with type A dissection if the patient simultaneously has developed a stroke? يعني ال arch is affected, well branches are right full, the brain has been uh, compromised. يبقى كده in this situation it will be it will be fatal to uh, put the patient in a theater. 
طيب هنا هنستنى we will wait we'll assess neurologically we'll, we'll try with the medical treatment awaiting a surgery طيب type B medical treatment type B which will start with medical treatment هنا المورتاليتي is about 15 to 20% and it is very similar if I start with medical treatment as compared to starting with surgery هي هي 20% fatality if I started medical 20% fatality if I started surgical يعني ما يفرقش معايا في حاجة وبالتالي يستحسن ان انا اعمل ايه؟ يستحسن ان انا امشي ميديكال الاول and when to, when to put in the surgery في حالات the pain is intolerable and persistent blood pressure cannot be controlled despite giving the maximum من اللابيتالول and other vasodilative drugs occlusion of a major arterial trunk وده اللي احنا بنخاف منه اكتر حاجة a major arterial trunk compromising a big uh, uh, compromising a very big vessel ده معناه areas of infarct كبير according to the vessel compromised uh, development of a localized aneurysm aneurysms might rupture وده هيبقى fatal frank leak of the aorta frank rupture of the aorta all of these will make surgery my first priority in a type B dissection طيب if patient جايلي ايه عنده chronic aortic dissection the patient was controlled on medical treatment his blood pressure was controlled وبيعمل follow up by CT or MR زي ما قلنا using the same modality every eight, three to six months. So control of blood pressure هنا is the must. وزي ما قلنا control of blood pressure هو mainstay of medical treatment with drug of choice. الأساسي هو beta blocker. هنا طبعا oral beta blockers سواء beta one selected أو لا whichever high control of blood pressure. We accept systolic blood pressures up to uh, uh, less than 100 in aortic dissection to keep the aorta at rest. Preventing a lot of excess trauma to the aorta and shear stress. A بقى the long term therapy العيندة whether treated surgically or medically. A treatment رأي مش عليه. Beta blockers أول حاجة not contraindicated. We will try with the medicators. We will try for any contraindications. And it's a very important drug in treatment of aortic or maintaining patient with an aortic dissection. Blood pressure. We will try. The goal is less than 120 by 80. And imaging, as we've just said, imaging of the ear to serially. You stahsan nafs imaging modality within a month, three months, and then six months after the stroke. Yeah, and if that one month, and then followed by three months, by then finally six months. Um, كل day follow up is one or two times per year. Yeah, and every six months or every twelve months, according to the rate of progression, or the 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 site of the dissection, the seriousness of the condition. And if the symptoms recur, patients should know what to do. Run to the ED, run to the diagnosis, starting on beta blocker therapy, blood pressure should be measured quickly, and so on. Aortic coarctation is a congenital condition. It is quite common. We have a common congenital heart disease. It is a common congenital heart disease that causes a left-sided hypertrophy and heart failure. The first congenital is the left hand. تعمل congenital تاكو إنه ال co-arc is one of the diseases that affects a causes a في natural history بتاعه left side of the heart. بس site of the co-arc we can find نحن النهاردة كلام على الأورتا. The site of the co-arc is هو عبارة عن area of tightening, a tight area in the aorta. Usually, the common site هو distal to mean distal to the left subclavian, very close to the site of the ductus اللي كان موجود ductus arteriosus اللي هو after birth known as ligamentum arteriosus. It is around the same place or very very proximal to the site of the ligamentum arteriosus. Fee bae variants, fee variant pre-ductal just uh, before the ductus and V variant post-ductal just uh, beyond the ductus arteriosus and there is another variant which is just at the site of the ductus arteriosus. Important in the cath lab during dilatation of these vessels or dilatation of these areas of coarctation, but otherwise just for your own knowledge. Coarctations, uh, a lot of the time, pass unnoticed. They have done asymptomatic for years, but uh, hypertension in a young in a young in a young patient would raise concern. Doesn't need to investigate it properly. في الحالات دي hyper measurement of blood pressure I am going to start to start to twenty years under hypertension I need to see the the blood pressure in both limbs I need to see the blood pressure or at least examine the lower limbs for cold extremities weak pulsations peripheral weak ephemeral pulsations 
uh, weak positions in his lower limbs, undersized lower limbs relative to the upper limbs. Phil Groff, a lay in lower part of the body grows, has grown less than equal proportions, uh, are uh, not symmetrical. Um, by echo, ممكن a lay, and by, and by examination, طبعاً, signs of left ventricular hypertrophy, because this co-arc is very similar to an aortic stenosis. That I mean pressure. Uh, I'm a constriction. I, it needs a lot of pressure from the heart to pump. Will develop LVH and then might develop a mid-systolic murmur of a similar to the murmur of aortic stenosis, though not at the aortic area. The uh, echo with CT or MRI can confirm easily the diagnosis of heart condition. Treatment of patients with treatment of patients with heart condition simply by intervention either stenting. Stenting will balloon my what? What did I mention? Balloon the one. Don't forget the habit for a year. مش مجالها but stenting of the site of core condition حط دعامة opening the site using a stent أول balloon to inflate and then a stent in the core position to prevent it uh, recoiling and narrowing again أو surgical treatment كل واحدة ليها indications but it's not a um, it's not the scope of this lecture لكن for you to know treatment of core is an intervention either stent placement stent is done in um, a cat lab, a catheter lab, so it's not an open heart procedure. Our surgical treatment is here, deal open heart and putting in, um, a, 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 a putting in a graft at the side of the core condition and widening it. Then it's all hit the core, cutting across will be hard to graft at the side of core.